Monopoly is one of the most played games in the world, and it's been a staple of family game nights for nearly 90 years. But how did a game about owning property become so popular? Where did it even come from? I'm Kevin from Vsauce 2, and today I'm with Google Arts and Culture to dig deep into the cultural phenomenon that is Monopoly. So grab your top hat and join me and your rich uncle Pennybags as we navigate the mysteries behind the world's favorite board game. The very first edition of the game that would later become Monopoly was invented by Elizabeth McGee in 1902. Lizzie was a game designer, writer, and economic activist. The Landlord's Game was meant to explain the economic philosophy of Georgism. She knew that millions of people living in poverty needed to understand the system of rents and land ownership that resulted in their economic struggles. And to Lizzie, the best way to address inequality and unfairness was through a game. Lizzie held the patent for the Landlord's Game for over 30 years before selling it to Charles Darrow and Parker Brothers in 1935, where it exploded in popularity. Charles Darrow lost his sales job after the stock market crash of 1929, and he saw his friends and neighbors playing a game about buying and selling property. He drew and painted his own version on a round oilcloth board and procured paper property cards. He fashioned the houses and hotels that improved each property from wood molding, and he called the game Monopoly. The Parker brothers bought the patent for the landlord's game from McGee for $500 so they could begin manufacturing Darrow's Monopoly without legal challenge. The deal included redesigning and republishing the game in its current form, but Parker Brothers credited Darrow for its invention. Lizzie McGee's contribution to one of the most popular and important games in history was largely forgotten. We all know how much fun Monopoly can be, the twists of fate from chance and community chess cards, the highs of collecting massive rents and lows of bankruptcy, and the wheeling and dealing in property trades. But during World War II, the game was actually used to help smuggle money and escape tools to allied prisoners in Germany. These special edition sets contained real money, maps, compasses, and other instruments hidden within the game's materials. And when you think of Monopoly, you think of a mustached man with a monocle and top hat cheering you on or forcing you to give up your last dollar. That's Mr. Monopoly and his appearance was drawn from the investment banking tycoon J.P. Morgan. By the 1940s, the mascot had become Rich Uncle Pennybags, and later on Hasbro renamed him to Mr. Monopoly. Oh, and everyone knows free parking, but there's a pretty good chance you've been doing it wrong your whole life. As more people played the game, they increasingly invented their own variations on the rules and house rules, like awarding collected luxury tax to the player who lands on free parking, aren't actually part of the game. Free parking is exactly what it says. Free. You might make $200 for passing go, but Monopoly has made around $1.4 billion since the Parker Brothers introduced it. And that's real money, not Monopoly money. Within the game's first year, 20,000 copies were being produced per week. And now, over 275 million copies have been sold in Monopoly's 87-year history. Marvin Gardens, Kentucky Avenue, Boardwalk, they're not just game properties. All of these places are actually real. The standard edition of Monopoly takes its property names from streets in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Mediterranean Avenue is statistically the worst property on the board. It's the first one after Go. And a 40-spot game board using a pair of dice with an average roll of 7 favors properties in other positions, like Illinois Avenue, which has a chance card that sends you directly to it. As the world has embraced simulated risk and ruin, Monopoly has been customized and localized. There are thousands of versions of the game. The Monopoly wiki lists at least 1,100 right now, but we know there are more. But what if the bunny wasn't fake? Monopoly celebrated its 80th birthday in 2015, and Hasbro released 80 games in France that contained real money, including one that had its entire bank replaced by actual currency for a grand total of 20,580 euro, or about $22,000. 
What started as an important social and economic critique evolved into a game enjoyed by kids and just about everyone everywhere. But we shouldn't forget its origins in Elizabeth McGee's mind. And without her dedication to promoting a game about exposing inequality, we'd be having far less fun today. Would the Landlord's Game eventually have become a bestseller? Or did we need rich Uncle Pennybags to wink through his monocle as we passed go on our way to wealth? If you're in a playful mood and want to immerse yourself in a game right now, go visit Google Arts & Culture's Play Hub. You could play Puzzle Party, What Came First, Crosswords, and many, many more. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go help a thimble get out of jail. <laughs>